if that truly was the recipe for perfect health and long life, then those type of people wouldn't be dying. Right. And there are so, some people who smoke and drink and <laughs> carry on and they're still like 103. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna say. Charles Todd, Angela Todd, bringing you the word as usual, the abundant life. Let it rip, eh? What are we talking about today? We are talking about how to have perfect health. He is the pillar of health. Everywhere we go, the you just have this anointing of health on your life. You always get stopped. Amen. Amen. I received that. Yes. So a lot of times, you know, when you're thinking, okay, we're talking about health, it's like going to tell you steps on how to eat right, how to exercise, sleep, all that, you know, it's what you think. It's like, it's about what you got to do, right? Well, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through those natural things that I like to call them. But I want to start by really just setting a firm foundation as we do, because it's all about living the abundant life that Jesus came to give us, what it says in John 10, 10. Right. But the thing that I want you to realize is that our health comes from Him. It doesn't come from us. Right. Because you can have people that are completely healthy, that are you know, the runners or they're triathlons or whatever they may be, and they may be in perfect shape and eating exactly the right diet and all this stuff, and they drop dead. It's like, if that truly was the recipe for perfect health and long life, then those type of people wouldn't be dying. Right. And there are so. some people who smoke and drink and <laughs> carry on, and they're still like 103. <laughs> well, to each his own. <laughs> yeah, right? It's what you believe. If you believe you're going to live a long life because Christ came to redeem you. Amen. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. In moderation. Moderation. Yeah. But you know what we're going to learn here, I think, is really is that you know our health came from Christ. Right. That's where our health comes from. But because we are thankful for what He did, it's like we respect that. Right. We don't abuse it. We honor what He did. It's like right. when we give our daughter a new car, which we're getting ready to do. Again, it's <laughs> she respects it. She takes care of it. She you know, gets it washed, gets it detailed, does the servicing or whatever, she respects and honors what we did for her. And you know, it can be that way in any setting, where sometimes when people get something, if they don't respect where it came from, they might not do that. But you also have to be trained in that. I think, you know, when you have children, you also need to teach your children in respecting the things that they do get. Because it's a, sometimes it can be a learned trait too, of just taking care of your stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So go ahead and kick us off on Isaiah 53 and 5, a very familiar scripture, so we can set the foundation of how we're going to teach this. Great. Isaiah 53, 5, New King James Version. But he who was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We are healed. So we're healed, we're healed right? We are healed. So read it now from the New Testament, 1 Peter 2, 24. It's a little bit different on... How I want to set this up. First Peter 2.24, New King James. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Okay, so here's the difference in this I want you to see. The first one in Isaiah said, you are healed. So if you are something, it's already been done, right? So if you were healed, you are healed as well too. Let me give you an example. If I tell this man that, hey, I'm going to pay off all your debts for you, okay? Give me all the information to pay your debts for you. So he gives me all of his accounts, whatever. I go and I pay, I take care of it, and I call him and say, hey, guess what, bro? All your debts were paid. What does he know now? Those debts were paid. Does he have any debts moving forward? No. They're paid off. Right. He's debt free. Hallelujah. <laughs> he ain't got no debts. It's the same thing here. Your debt of sickness and disease was paid for by the stripes of Jesus Christ. It were paid for by that. Because it were, guess what? Sickness and disease shouldn't be part of your life anymore. It's just like the guy being paid. All of his debts are paid off. Your, your debts of sickness were paid. 
That's a very bold and interesting statement <laughs> that okay. you did not make. It's in the word because of all of the diagnoses and symptoms that one can experience. And I was just having this conversation yesterday with somebody of they had broken a bone and when they broke a bone, the doctor let them know that, oh, well, you know, you better do this and take all this medication because the future of things to come, you're going to have all these other problems. And so then they start believing that the reason why I can't walk is because of what I did and I'm going to have so many problems in the future. They're already mulling over being problematic in their life. And I was like, hold up. You have to start with, you are healed. And if you are healed, if you're experiencing a symptom, you got to flip the switch and then act or see yourself as if you, those symptoms don't exist because it will then disappear. And I've known this in my own life to be true. And so have you. Well, I think, you know, another important thing, and yes, that's great. It's a great testimony. What it says here in the middle is might live for righteousness. So what is righteousness? It's a gift, right. you know, so you're receiving that free gift of that. And it's like we were talking about before, you know, having those things that we are given and having respect out of them. So that's what leads us to then do what we need to do in the natural to respect what Christ has done for us. He's given us that free gift of riches, honor, long life, healing, peace, protection. He's giving us all that through the Christ because through the cross, because he took all the bad so we'd have all the good. So it's like when you receive that, it's like, oh, daddy, how can you not then respect your body? So for sake of time, we're gonna get into this because we've got a lot to go through. I'm gonna go pretty quickly. You can, great thing about this, you can stop, start, do it, take notes as we go through, but we're gonna move quickly because of time. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna talk about, how do we how to respect the body that Jesus, that God has given us, that Jesus has died for to give us this health? How do we take care of it? Number one is diet. So read 1 Corinthians 6.19 for us. 1 Corinthians 6.19, the, the way mouth. Or do you not know that your bodies are the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who is within you, the spirit of whom you have from God? So our body is a sanctuary, right? Right. So the, it's the sanctuary where the Holy Spirit dwells. Because when Christ went to heaven, what did he do? He left us the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is within us. Christ is in us. God is in us. That is all within us. So, you know, it's like we're talking about if you give somebody this beautiful house, we're going to take care of it. We've been given this house, the body that is the tent or the house of our what? Our spirit man. Because we're a three-part being. We're a body, a spirit, and a soul. So the body then is going to house that spirit. So if you don't take care of your body, it can actually have negative effects on your spirit life. Because if you're suffering through obesity or sickness and disease or whatever, you're going to be sometimes focused on how you're trying to get healed, whether you're believing or whatever it is that you're doing, and you're not able to focus on other things in your life. Exercise, spending your quiet time, spending prayer time, being able to get out. If you're having to take care of yourself in a way that shouldn't, you shouldn't have to be too, then it's going to change all these areas of your life in a negative perspective. And there's, some people might think, well, I don't have the time. I don't have the time to eat right. I don't have the time to exercise. I don't have the time to whatever the case may be. And what would you say to that? I would say, take this typical what I do with people. If they want to ask me for diet advice, I say, write down everything you eat for at least two days, everything and be honest because then what I'll do is I'll analyze what they'll eat and then I'll tweak it. I'm not just going to just say, well, here's a diet. Three egg whites in the morning, oatmeal in the afternoon, dried tuna, two pork, two broth. I can do that, but some people can't do that. And what I learned with giving dietary analysis to international athletes is that all these different people eat different. Like Japanese kids eating fish, raw fish for breakfast. Do the Americans eat raw fish? No. So, you, but you have to tweak it based on what they're already doing. So it's the same way. You know, you've got to tweak, but point that I'm trying to get to answer your question is that write down everything that you're eating, but write down everything that you're doing as well too. What do you do from the moment you get up until you go to bed? How much time are you spending on social media? How much time are you watching TV? How much? Those are places you can start to cut 
to then do meal preparation, to exercise, whatever it may be. If you spend an hour watching TV, then cut it in half and then go spend 30 minutes walking around the neighborhood. I mean, but if you actually break it down where you can see it, then you can start saying, okay, here's a part of my schedule where I can carve out and do something to do that. Okay. So, so what does a good diet help us to do? Number one, it helps us to maintain our ideal body weight, helps us to feel and perform better. It improves our mood and it improves our quality of sleep. So those are all great things that you can just accomplish through good diet. So what's this, what would be like this spiritual thing to get you to that place of just focusing on, I would say just Christ and you know, there's no obesity in heaven. There's no uh, sickness and disease like you were saying and just focusing on Christ and what he has done will enable you and just asking, Lord, help me help to chisel my diet and my exercise help me to make the right choices holy spirit i just yield to you to make the right choices in my diet in my exercise and asking the lord for that wisdom and for that favor and then automatically you will just have the the desire or the right craving for something so that you you don't think like oh gosh like i have to i have to do all this stuff you'll you'll have a desire to want to do it you'll have a desire to not to want to do this or a desire not to want to do that because you've already given it to him and asked him to help you there's one way that it can manifest out in your life amen amen that's good well and i think it's something that we were just talking about um, in a previous teaching it's about true humility and focusing on christ and what first john 4 17 says that as he is so are this world. So focusing on him still folks, man, oh, it's so hard for me. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I just don't know how I can. I, I, get your attention off yourself and put it on him. How is Jesus right now sitting at the right hand? Is he overweight? Is he having problems exercising? Having, no, he's, his, he's perfect being and you are the same way. So know that through that, you have that same ability. So you're receiving the righteousness and the grace for you to be able to do it then effortlessly. And using your words, not saying, oh, I don't have the time. Yeah. Oh, I don't have the desire. Oh, I don't have, I, 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 again, I don't, I don't. I have the time. I have the ability. I crave the right things. I do the right thing. You know, just then using your words to get you on that path like we just talked about, like with Keith Moore with the smoking thing. Yeah. Well, that's all we have time for this time. We're going to have to make part two, but you're going to want to tune in because we're talking about how to have perfect health. We were talking about ways that you can do it through your diet. We're gonna get into exercise and sleeping next time. So oh, get part two. You're gonna to wanna to hear it because it's gonna help you. Gonna help you live the abundant life. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. Till next time, peace. <laughs>